Uh, if, uh, wow, I started the last video exactly like that as well. Okay, what's up? What's happening, everyone? Uh, today, it is the day of all days. It's not Monday, so it's not necessarily International Chess Day, but it is Chess Day. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit a little bit of dumbbell work, a little bit of cable flies, and we're just gonna keep it real nice and simple as, uh, as, as it pertains to chest training. I really don't vary my training that much, okay? It's really just push, fly, push, fly, and push, fly. Might throw in a little bit of biceps because, you know, why not? And uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be what we, what we do today, y'all. So, here we go. And boom! All right, my wife isn't asleep on this one. She's right there. She's right there, and if she wants to tune in, she can tune in at any moment. I've already given her the okay, so everybody knows now. Getting into this warm-up, it's pretty standard stuff. If you saw the back day stuff, it's pretty similar. I mean, you know, upper body, a little bit of external rotation right there with the band, some internal rotation on both sides. We already know the drill. We know what's good out here. Uh, dripping off that young LA, or young La, whatever you want to call it. Whatever, whatever it's called, and uh, getting these weighted pull-throughs with the PVC pipe and my 10-pound uh, little plate, my little dime, my little dime plate, y'all. Just really getting the shoulders warm and ready to get this chest workout. Now, here we go. This is a bit of a specific warm-up I like to throw in. Uh, it, it basically works external rotation of the shoulder, but if you have elbow or shoulder pain when you're doing bench presses, I recommend that exercise before you get into your bench work or any of your pushing work because it just gonna, it's just going to warm up and turn on all the muscles that stabilize the shoulder and the chest throughout these pushing movements, y'all. So this is going to be a bit of a long one. It's going to be a bit of a long one because... Uh, I really take my time in uh, in my bench press work and in my eccentrics here. You're going to notice that. I hang out. I hang out at the bottom to really accentuate that stretch on the chest there. On my little bird chest, I'm trying to, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to, baby, I'm trying to grow these tid Ds. You know what I'm saying? We don't want tid As. We don't even want Tid B's. Tid Daddies. We want, we want Tid D's, exactly, precisely. And that's why I'm hanging out in the stretch. That's why I'm hanging out in the stretch right there. Uh, slow eccentric, pause at the bottom, and decent, decent concentric, okay? It doesn't have to be like out the wall, through the roof type of fast, but getting a nice uh, sensation throughout this entire thing. I, I, I think right now I'm working with 25 pound dumbbells, which ain't, which really ain't shit. It ain't shit, but it feels good for 15 reps and to be able to stretch that chest adequately for 15 reps, 25 pounds was all that I needed. I used a, uh, a bit of a pyramid set throughout this entire workout. So, uh, excuse me, I just burped. Now I got, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I went 10 pounds up. So now we're dealing with 35 pound dumbbells. Um, <clears throat> uh, but every time I went up in weight, I went down in reps. So I had 25 pounds before I did 15 reps. Now I do, I, I, I'm doing uh, 35 and I'm going to only hit 12 reps of this, but the same technique is in mind, right? Slow eccentric. Nice pause, nice stretch at the bottom, and then bring it back up top. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, y'all. I'm working incline, dumbbell, incline, bench press. You see my Sasha Bear right there just kind of sniffing around and uh, figuring her life out, um, you know, in the gym. Uh, as, as, as are we all, right? We're all just kind of figuring our lives out in the gym from time to time. And, uh, you know, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, pausing a little bit at the top, I'm starting to feel this one a lot more. 10 pound increase ain't, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot. 35 pounds is definitely not a lot. I'm, I'm not breaking any bench pressing records anytime soon, but, uh, you know, go relative, relative to where you all are at in terms of your ability. Um, but again, working this incline, focusing on the upper chest. Here's a different angle right here. Uh, same exercise, but now I'm working with what I believe is 45 pounds, 
So 45 pounds, 10 pound increase from 35 to 45. I can do math and 10 reps, 10 reps only on this set. Everything I got was about three sets uh, in, in that pyramid escalating style. Uh, I find that I I get a really, really good workout doing that, uh, going that way. Sometimes I'll mix up some straight sets here and there, but I really like the pyramid set uh, just because I feel it covers a lot, checks off a lot of boxes, covers a lot of bases with the light, uh, light work, high rep, you're getting a lot more of the slow twitch endurance fibers. And then as you climb up into the weight to the upper sets, you're dealing with that heavy weight, but low reps so dealing with a lot more fast twitch fibers. So for me, in terms of efficiency, in terms of, again, checking off boxes, I really like to implement this into my workout for that exact reason. Moving in to now the cable flies. I call these high to low cable flies because the cable's coming from a very high set point all the way down to a low set point. So I structure my workout, especially in terms of chest training in this regard here. So we just got done hitting the dumbbell incline, which is working the upper chest. And I move immediately into a fly movement, which is really gonna accentuate the stretch, but this time we're working more low chest, okay? Working that that scoop, you know what I'm saying? That, that nice sweep of the chest right here, which I, has always been a weak point for me. Uh, over, over time, it's gotten better, but it's still not necessarily where I want it to be. I want, I, I want them titties to be like hanging, you know what I'm saying? I want that, I want that droop. I want, you know what I'm saying, baby? I want that, I want that like squared off droop, you know, the, the, she knows what I'm talking about. She knows what Goku I'm talking about. Goku pecs. That's right. I want that square, those square ass pecs. You know what I'm saying? They look like fucking, fucking implants. That's, that's almost what I want here. But back to the technique, slow eccentric, big stretch at the top big squeeze at the bottom, focusing a lot more on that low chest right here. I got a few different angles out here because if you if you saw my back day video, you would know that I'm still dealing with this weird kind of like my, shul my right shoulder seems to elevate at times. And in both my back work and my chest work, I can feel that come into play. So I don't really know what that is. I feel like it has a lot to do with uh, with like the Terry's major, Terry's minor, the whole shoulder blade area back here, I feel is probably a little weak on my right side than it is on my left side. And that's kind of what uh, is is the contributing factor to, you know, that that compensation movement pattern there. But uh, but eh, with time, we're going to get there. We're, we're working on it. We're working on it. So y'all can see this big stretch, big old stretch, and then, you know, big squeeze there at the bottom. So Finishing up with those cable flies, I moved into my flat bench, and you can see my Sasha Bear uh, licking the sweat right off my face, mid-set, mid-set. But you know, hey, we all focus out here. Well, I don't give a fuck about that shit, and she knows that, and so she got distracted by something else, and she's gonna get ready to get, get, on, to get on the way, or maybe not, no, she found something on the floor. A commonality that you're gonna find in this entire thing is that y'all this is this is pretty simple i'm not using any crazy machines i'm not using no hammer strengths no uh no no you know wild chest flies or nothing like that none of these hoist uh chest movements that you know like you, you rock back and forth and shit. I, I don't have those machines i have some dumbbells i have a, a pretty decent rack and uh i've got a bench and as it pertains to chest training I really think that that's really about all you need. And then, and then throw in some dips in the middle of it. Hey, you, you've pretty much covered all of your bases. Don't get me wrong, I love machines. I love a nice machine. I like a nice hammer strength machine. I like a nice, you know, uh, free motion machine, which is basically a cable machine. But, you know, as it pertains to what we're doing here, the biomechanics don't necessarily change machine to machine to machine. If you're doing pushing, and you're doing some flies, you're hitting the chest. It's just that simple. I got this angle here to uh, demonstrate and show the range of motion on my uh, on my dumbbell chest presses here. I'm going all the way down, making sure that we get a good stretch there. I'm almost coming all the way down to my ribs, y'all, okay? If you have the flexibility for it, I highly recommend it. Uh, as Tom Platt said in a, in, in a video I saw a while back, flexibility 
He was a big proponent of flexibility. And now obviously for the legs, right? Mm -hmm. Tom, everybody knows Tom Platt's is leg day. Everybody knows that. But flexibility can pertain and apply to any part of the body. And what he had to say about flexibility is this. Flexibility doesn't necessarily give you anything in terms of the look, but what it gives you is access. Access to deeper ranges of motion that over time will produce greater results and longevity, in my opinion, uh, throughout this entire game. Whether you're enhanced or you're natty, which I'm, I'm out here, natty as can be, uh, you know, that's why I'm only pressing 35s, okay? Uh, but if you have the chance to go deep, go, go, re get, get a nasty stretch under load over time, that's going to promote flexibility. It's going to promote better range of motion. It's going to promote better health in your shoulders and a better look in the whole chest here, y'all. You're going to be able to do more with less and be able to last a lot longer in the game here. So I think I'm pushing now again. For 45s, maybe 50s, maybe somewhere closer to 50, 55, 52 pounds. My dumbbells are a little weird because they're Canadian and they're converted from kg to pounds. So the increments are, are very, very strange. So somewhere around, somewhere between 45, 50 pounds, 55 pounds at the most uh, is what we're working with here. But again, it's just, it's real simple, y'all. We stretch, slow eccentric, uh, pause at the bottom. And just just get that work, breathing into the nose, out through the mouth. Now, following up those flat bench presses, I went back to the cable machine, and now, as you can see, I lowered the cables to about, I would say maybe about the abdominal area, and I'm really focusing on getting my arms wide, getting that chest nice and proud, and then bringing my elbows together, okay? Uh, this, I felt, was stretching out the, the, the chest, uh, following up the dumbbell work uh, in a really, really nice way. It just felt good on the chest, felt good on the shoulders, didn't feel it too much in the biceps, which is something that, uh, that, if, that some people can feel when it comes to flies. They're like, I feel this more in my biceps than I do in my chest. In that case, you just kind of modulate the movement, modify whatever you need to do to, in order to feel it in the uh, in the desired muscle group. Again, here we go on the right side. You can see my shoulder kind of moving up a little bit, moving up. I'm trying to figure it out. I, you can't see it, but I've got a mirror right in front of me to where I'm able to see in real time what my shoulders are doing. And I'm trying to modify the movement to make sure that both shoulders are in line with each other to promote things like symmetry, we all like symmetry. We don't want to be asymmetrical. If you know what a BMW S1000 RR is from, uh, let's say, like 2010 to like 2017 or 2018, something like that, you'll know that that motorcycle has an asymmetrical design. And it's a great motorcycle. It's probably one of the best motorcycles ever. But because it's fucked up and asymmetrical, I don't like looking at it. And a lot of people don't like looking at it. But it's like kind of the best. But we don't want asymmetries. Asymmetries are no go. We don't want that. We don't want that. So I got I got another angle right here, and I swear, I promise you, I promise you, I'm trying my best to look straight at the mirror, but it kind of looks like I'm looking right into your soul. And I, I'm sorry if that's the case. I don't mean to. Um, you know, I don't mean to. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Look at my right shoulder. Sometimes it's it right there. Nope, it looks a little. It looks a little chueco. It looks a little off. It looks a, that looks a little better, but there we go. There we go. Trying to just control it, y'all. Trying to just control where my shoulders are in relation to my chest work. Uh, flaring the lats out a little bit, in my opinion, seemed to help. Seemed to put my shoulders in the right position. Uh, but you can see that big stretch that I got going on there. And finally, to wrap up all of this chest work, I like to throw in a little bit of biceps. Why? Why do I like to throw in a little bit of biceps? Mainly because of my vanity. Mainly. But scientifically, because throughout all of this pushing work, mainly the pushing work, uh, with the incline bench press and the flat bench press, 
I'm already indirectly hitting the triceps a little bit. So this is kind of just bang for the buck kind of mentality. If I've already hit the triceps for a few sets during my pressing movements, then throw in a little bit of biceps at the very end just to kind of, once again, check off that box, y'all. I've got my kettlebells. I'm working with some kettlebells. Traditionally, you'll see this done with dumbbells. This is a seated, this is a seated bicep curl, but I'm doing, with, doing it with kettlebells because as you can see, the weight is in front of my uh, is in front of my hands, which is causing my forearms to actually uh, to, to activate and maintain this position here through the range of motion. And you can see it pretty clearly right there. I've been working on forearm stability. I've been working on forearm strength. I feel like it's a very uh, it's 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 like a missing piece in my physique here and so i've been doing these now for i want to say the greater part of about a year maybe even a year and a half and my bicep my bicep strength performance and overall connection mind muscle connection has gone has 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 gone up substantially with this exercise right here i'm not using that much weight i think it's like these kettlebells are probably like somewhere between 15 18 pounds again they're they're kg so yeah, it's good you know it's a little bit it's a little bit off like that, but uh, fine. Uh, this is, the, yeah, no, this is the last exercise. Um, finishing up, instead of the hammer curls, I'll grab underneath and I'll hold the bell right here with my hand. And that just for me, it just, it just kind of feels a little different. I feel I get a little bit more bicep work, so taking a little bit of attention off the forearms and putting it back on into the bicep and just kind of using the whole hand there. Uh, just kind of feels really nice. If you haven't tried these, if you haven't tried using kettlebells for your curling work, I highly recommend it. Uh, it might just be a different feeling for you. And you know, hey, variety is the spice of life, y'all. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, like, comment, share, subscribe, rumble, if that's what it's called on rumble. And uh, I'll see you next time. Woo! Peace.